Have you ever wondered, what's the deal with intuition? Why should I try to access my intuition? Now, a lot of CEOs talk about this, right? That it's part of their secret sauce to make their business successful. But what does it matter in my life? So today I thought I'd share with you the four really big intuitive decisions that I made that had a huge financial payoff and really changed the course of my life. So the first one was a really fun project. I bought a Sprinter van, which is like the Amazon Prime van, you know, the cargo van. And I built a camper inside so that I could travel with my two dogs. It took me about a year to build this out. And in my mind, I was doing this because I wanted to travel. And uh, But it turns out that when COVID hit, that I really wasn't that interested in traveling anymore. I wanted to be home. And so I decided to sell the van. And I had put about 80K in the van, and I sold it for 109 to the first guy who saw it, and he purchased it cash in 15 minutes. This was the best deal that I ever made. <laughs> the second big intuitive decision that I made find that had a really interesting payout financially was that I was a burned out single mom, an engineer, and I needed a place to go retreat and recharge my batteries. For seven years, seven years, I looked for property that I could afford. Um, and then one day, one property dropped within my filters. Now, it had been on the market for five years, but it, has, it was at like 135000 or something, which I couldn't afford. But eventually, it came down to seventy, which was close to my budget, and I bought it for fifty nine. And the reason I bought it for fifty nine is I offered fifty nine because I thought it was a fair price, and somebody else in the same week offered fifty. <laughs> So the owner thought, okay, we've bottomed out. I'm going to take this second offer. So thank you to that person who did that. That really helped me out. So over the next five years, I did improvements to this property. It was in the middle of the woods. It was 10 acres. There was no neighbors. Across the way was BLM land, so nobody could build there. And it was overlooking a lake, but there was no view. So I hired somebody to, to open up the view, a logger, who was a really cool guy. And then I also found out that they could log the back of my property and selectively. So I made another 25K out of this, didn't have to lift a finger. They did everything for me. And eventually when I sold the land five years later, after also building a tiny house on it, so I could be comfortably hanging out there when I was there, I made 185, 185K. All right. The third one was the first house that I bought on my own. So I got divorced. And I was renting at the time and I was having an argument with the friends where I was saying, I have to rent because I could never find a house in my budget that I would want to live in because <laughs> I don't want to live in a dump. So I went online, you know, to prove my point. I'm, I'm going to send them some pictures of horrifying houses. There was one house in my neighborhood um, for 189, 89K. And it was so cute. It was a cute house. It was perfect for my son and I. Um, we could each have our own bathroom, which we didn't have in the apartment. Uh, but it made me smile, you know, the first time I looked at it. So I thought, well, I'll try it. So it was a short sale. It took five months to close on that house, but I did get it. I won the auction by $5. I kid you not. I offered $189 and $5. And there was somebody else who offered just full price. Um, and I lived in that house for seven years with my son, and we have extremely happy memories there. Um, I sold it for 320000 five years later. Now, this was before COVID. Okay, this was in 2015. The market was not in good shape back then. So this was a huge accomplishment for me. But more significantly, I had paid off my mortgage. So I was debt-free at that time. All right, the fourth big intuitive decision that changed my life where people went, what? What are you doing? I, I spent a lot of time in college. I spent nine years in college. Um, I was in a PhD in psychology. I'd been working on that for five years. Um, but I felt stuck, specifically around my thesis. I had writer's block. And I thought, you know, I'm going to take a sabbatical, take three months off. Um, I had a scholarship. Um, I thought, okay, I'm just going to take three months off. And I asked my friends, uh, does anybody have a room? I would like to be somewhere else. So I, I'm from Montreal. I was in, in Canada at the time. And I had a friend in, in the U.S. Um, and so I came to Oregon. And 
in the three months, in that, those th the three months, I realized I wanted to do something else. And I decided to take a class in engineering, computer science. One class at the community college, just to see how it was. And during that class, I go to the teacher to ask her a question because I was a little lost. And in the conversation, she says, uh, we talk about my background. And so I'm not technical. I have a bachelor's in psychology. And she says, how oh, funny. I have a bachelor's in psychology, too. <laughs> and she was, you know, a software engineer. She, was a, she, she would move on to be a, a VP of engineering and a CEO. So this woman really changed my life as well. Uh, this was not part of the financial decision, but it definitely put me on the right track here. And she encouraged me to pursue a master's degree in engineering since I already had a bachelor's, which is what I did. Now, the lifetime earning over my 20-year career was double. As, a software, as an engineer, I made twice as much money as I would have made as a very successful uh, therapist. Overall, these four decisions generated $1.8 million for me that I would not have earned or had access to if it had not been for my intuition. And that is why intuition is a big deal. All right, that's all I'm getting for you today. I hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you soon.